I have with me uh, an astronomer, uh, R.C. Kapoor from Bangalore here. Uh, sir, it's a big day uh, for ISRO. Um, uh, the, the space agency has uh, uh, launched its 100th satellite, uh, marking a milestone in uh, the country's journey. Uh, ever since you know 1969 and until uh, today so um, as an astronomer or an astrophysicist like what do you um, uh, how do you see this particular journey see as a citizen of india it's a most remarkable moment for all of us it's almost like a new year's gift first it was spadex now it's the launch of uh, nvs 02 through and this is the 100th uh, launch of isro since 1979, the first launch was of SLV rocket on 10th August. Since then, uh, this launch is the 100th. So obviously, uh, there is a great uh, happiness because this launch has been successful. As I was watching in the morning, it went just like a textbook uh, prescription. So it's remarkable that ISRO has reached that kind of a level of uh, expertise, perfection and, and sophistication. So can you uh, tell something more about uh, this particular mission, that's the ISRO's um, 100th uh, mission, which is a navigational satellite, what we call, and uh, how is it like uh, with, um, how does it function and how, how is it going to help uh, when it is compared with uh, the GPS and you know the, the series of that it's going to, um, uh, going to come, so about that if you can tell our viewers. See, uh, you remember the Cargill war and then the, uh, we, were, we wanted certain positions very accurately and that, knowledge, that uh, information was denied to us for whatever reasons, I cannot say. Now, we needed our own kind of a system. So in 2006, uh, there was a proposal and that was approved, Indian Region uh, Navigational Satellite System, INRSS. So between 2013 and 2018, eight satellites were launched and they were mainly for military use although civilian use also was possible so uh, one satellite was a replacement also so now nvs is a new series new generation series the mission life is about 12 years and they are, they go to geosynchronous orbits which means that uh, uh, the uh, orbital height is 35786 kilometer above the mean sea level that's where a satellite is constantly looking at whichever region it is uh, it has been parked so so that's the main thing and uh, the new generation uh, satellites nvs01 was already launched in uh, may 2023 this was the launch today of nvs02 there are five satellites in the series and in the next four years nvs05 also uh, uh, will be launched they form a constellation and the region is such that it covers 1500 kilometer on either side of india's say uh, let's say the central line so uh, obviously we are looking at india and it has got rubidium clocks which are indigenously developed it has got a ranging system for distance and uh, giving the accurate position of the satellite uh, in its orbit. So with this constellation, we are able to do triangulation and get the accurate position of anything in our Indian region, as, as we will say. Now, the accuracy is, uh, the resolution is uh, 10 to 20 meters. And timing accuracy is 40 nanoseconds. Although GPS is a, is a major system, it covers the entire Earth. There are 32 satellites there. So now we have made a beginning for our own region. So obviously, we become sort of independent of any other. So NAVIC system is going to uh, be our main system for civilian use also. And then uh, your uh, mobile's uh, uh, clock uh, will be according to how these satellites gave us the timing and uh, 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 then uh, stock markets, power grids, everything will be. So there will be an Indian, Indian standard time, Indian, truly Indian standard time. So, uh, so uh, we are marching towards that. So obviously, and uh, see the triangulation method is very simple because you know 11, 12 students will do uh, area of a triangle and then find distance of so you need, uh, for such a thing, you need four satellites. And the concept how it arose when Sputnik 1 was launched in space in 1957. 
So, uh, on ground, the various stations wanted to know where it is now, where it is now. So, they will send signal. So, from Doppler effect, they will get the accurate position of the satellite. Now, the reverse. If you know the accurate position of the satellite, then anywhere else if you receive the signal, you get the accurate position of that place. So, that's how GPS was born. So, now is the time of standard posi positioning system, which will be India's. Okay. Sir, now, uh, talking about ISRO's journey, like uh, how do you um, observe that, what did you observe on the infrastructure development and the investments uh, when compared to the, the, pre the previous decades, like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then um, the, the recent ones, the, the latest ones. So, uh, from 1969 onwards, till it's, 100 satellite that ISRO has launched. Uh, your observations on how the boom was, how the the takeoff was as ISRO like a rocket. Okay, 1961, mm. Pakistan formed a space agency and the prime mover was Professor Abdus Salam, the great scientist who got Nobel Prize for Physics later. Mm. He made a beginning for Pakistan and you know where Suparko today is way behind us and that is for their own reasons. But one year later, INCOSPAR was formed and the prime movers were uh, Dr. Uh, Sarabhai, Dr. Uh, Homi Bhava and on their back was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. In 1962, as a 14-year kid, I would stand in the queue of ration shops for 5 kg of uh, red wheat which would come under PL480. India was trying to feed its people and India was also looking up in the space. Five, six years later in 1969, after uh, Neil Armstrong set his foot on the moon, within a few weeks of that, on 15th August 1969, uh, the Prime Minister uh, Mr. Indira Gandhi announced that now INCOSPAR is ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. After that, uh, it started to march. Now, it was all money consuming. They were doing experiments. Initially, uh, uh, INCOSPAR was doing experiments with uh, the uh, sounding rockets that will go up, say, 30 kilometers or 100 kilometers or whatever. For getting an idea of the atmosphere, how with height, uh, its various parameters change, pressure, density, and, uh, and the composition, etc. Now, we moved still, uh, and we became more ambitious. So, uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai's original vision is in these few words, the space technology should benefit the last denomination of the country. Today, the last denomination of the country is there to receive that benefit, okay? So that's a wonderful vision in those days when we couldn't think of anything, but here were our great scientists who made a, a system which has now been delivering results. See, the first uh, SLV launch, that is one of the three designs which uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai had selected of the uh, ro launching rocket, uh, satellite launch vehicle, it was first launched on 10th August 1979. Today was 100th launch by ISRO. So that is the great celebration for us because, see, in cricket, 100 means a great thing. But for ISRO, for the country, this 100 is also greatly special. So after that, now the first polar satellite launch vehicle successfully uh, was um, launched in 1994. After that, ISRO has not looked back. So if you say that, was the money worth uh, uh, being spent? I must say that we must investing in knowledge. We, must, we were investing in the system of knowledge that will grow and grow and inspire the new generations. And today, you see, after several generations in ISRO, it's all homegrown talent and now made in India uh, almost everything. Okay. So, now uh, speaking about the future projects like Chandrayaan 4, um, the, the Mars mission, uh, the Venus mission, and the Bharatiya Antariksha station. Uh, on that, like, wh what are your comments and um, 
like how how are we going to achieve that and what is isro's um, you know uh, stand on that see uh, i personally believe that isro got almost independent with the first successful launch of its gslv rocket that was in january 2014 so that gave a great confidence because we had mastered the cryogenic technology which was denied to us we ourselves mastered it and uh, see in cryogenic uh, technology we use uh, liquefied hydrogen and oxygen and we mix them up in space hydrogen is burnt and that's what provides the thrust etc so today's launch had a cryogenic stage also so that that was the, uh, in nine, in 2014 when we uh, felt confident that was the first uh, time we almost became independent of any uh, uh, dependence on the western technology second is with the ir irnss we tended to become more independent in terms of finding uh, uh, positions on the uh, on the ground our gps and now nvs is going to sort of uh, be a substitute for that as a new generation so we are going to get very accurate positions and all that virtually frees us all now apart from that in every different sphere isro has been gradually progressing there are many projects which are proposed say 15 years ago like aditya l1 also uh, took its own uh, big time to be able to we launch and then uh, we have seen how it it has been successfully been placed in the halo orbit and at 15 lakh kilometers from us towards the sun and there have been few science missions but mainly isro's focus has been on infrastructure development say earth observation satellites communication satellites so we have done that we are also doing science so chandrayaan missions venus orbiter mission is due in 2028 bharti antarik station will be a modular one and we start working uh, <laughs> practically on it uh, in the beginning 2028 so uh, different modules will be built here and then gradually they are going to be uh, lifted to uh, the uh, their proper orbit and then they will be uh, docked together so docking uh, technology also we have uh, uh, we have already shown the demonstration so apart from that there is a uh, chandrayaan 4 mission and uh, uh, lupex mission with uh, in collaboration with japan these are sample return missions from the moon so we are going to have a wonderful uh, uh, series of events when chandrayaan 4 goes up and then there is a ascending module that picks up the samples and then transfers them onto the transfer module then transfer module brings them Uh, on the earth so uh, robotic uh, activity uh, will help us uh, scoop a, a little bit of the moon that we bring here okay. so that was uh, astronomer uh, rc kapoor uh, from bangalore uh, joining us on isro's uh, 100 uh, satellite launch today with camera person uh, venkatesh permal this is billy thomas for news x bengaluru For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.